Hi and welcome to this part, where we are going to talk about inheritance and polymorphism in C Sharp. Inheritance in object-oriented programming languages is used to make applications faster and simpler. Because with inheritance, we can build several types based on a single abstraction. Inheritance defines which is the base or the parent class and which is the child one. A child class is a class that inherits from another one. And the class that other classes inherit from is the base one. And in C-sharp, the ultimate base class is the object class. Now, let us go to Visual Studio and learn about inheritance by defining different classes. So, in Visual Studio, I have already created a class named person.cs. And in the person class, I have defined two properties, which are the full name and age, and the method named getDetails. Now, we are going to use this base class to generate other types. It's important that when you choose the base class or the parent class, it is as much inclusive as possible. For example, with person now, we can define a student, we can define a teacher, because even though a teacher and a student are different types, they all have a common abstraction which means that they are all persons and they all have age, full name and we are going to define a getDetails method as well. So let us go to the Solution Explorer and create two more classes. So for that we right click, go to add and then class. Let us name this class student.cs, change the access modifier to be public so we can access it from other classes and then inherit from person. So this is when the inheritance concept comes into play. So when I say in here that the student class will inherit from the person, it means that all the methods and the properties that are within the person class now belong to the student.cs class as well. And let us do the same for another class. So for that, add a new class and name this professor and press enter. The same way, change the access modifier to be public and then inherit from the person base class. So, in this case, the child class is the professor and the base class is the person. Now, a child class can always have more properties or more methods than the base class. So, for example, for professor, we can define another property. Here we can write string and then subject. We can do the same for the student class. For students we can define a property which is unique only for students. So for that we write in here public integer grade. Then we define the get and set. Now let us save all the changes and go to the program.cs class and in here let us create three different objects. So let us create the person and we name this p1 is equal to new person and we do the same for the other classes as well. So in here now we created three different objects that us now assign values to all of them. Now in here we have defined the properties for all the objects. For the person class we know that it has two properties, the age and the full name. But we see that we can use the same properties for the professor and student. And the reason why we can do that is because in the professor class we have inherited from the person class and in the student class we have done the same. So now we are inheriting from the person base class, which means that we have access to the properties and the methods. But other than the properties of the person class, we can use the properties that we have defined within these classes as well. So for example, for the professor, we can write subject. And then in here, we can define it to be math, for example. And for the student, we can define the grade, which is of type integer. We can use the same method. So for example, for the person, we can write person.getDetails. We can do the same for the professor, because we are inheriting from the person base class. So for that, we write professor.getDetails. And we can do the same for this student, so for that we write student.getDetails. And if you want to see the result to the screen, 
Simply put the person.getDetails inside the writeLine method. And do the same for the professor and student. And to see the result on the screen, press the Ctrl F5 buttons. So here we have all the results. But currently to get the details for each object, we are using the getDetails method in the person.cs class. Suppose you want to use the same method in the child classes, but you just want to change it a little bit. And this is when polymorphism in C Sharp comes into play. The word polymorphism means having many forms. And in C Sharp is a concept where a method can be defined more than one time. We have two types of polymorphism. We have method overloading and method overriding. Method overloading means creating multiple methods in the class having the same name but different signatures, so different parameters. Let us create an overload method for the getDetails. A case would be, for example, public string, then getDetails. So we have the same name, but it takes a parameter, double height. Now the response can be the same, it doesn't matter, but what's important is that they have the same name, but different signatures. This is how you can overload a method. Now let us see how we can override a method, which means that we can use exactly the same method in the child class, but by modifying the outcome. To be able to override a method in the base class, first of all, the method needs to be defined as virtual. So for that, we need to write in here public, virtual and then string get details and then next go to the base class and write in here public then override get details now you can still choose to run the same method by using the base keyword and base stands for the person class but we want to customize it so for that we write goes to full name of age and then we can add the grade property as well so for that we write in here grade is equal to and then grade now we can do the same in the professor class so for that go to the professor.cs paste the same code and then change the grade to be subject save all the changes and then press ctrl f5 to see the result so in here we have the person then by using the same method we are displaying the subject for the professor class and the grade for the student one. 